Good afternoon and happy Friday to everyone. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we issued the following statement attributable to the spokesman for the Secretary General on Sri Lanka. The Secretary General commends the government of Sri Lanka for establishing the Office of Missing Persons, a significant milestone for all Sri Lankans still searching for the truth about their missing loved ones. The United Nations stands ready to support this process, and the Secretary General looks forward to the OMP becoming operational as soon as possible, starting with the appointment of independent commissioners. Emergency Relief Coordinator Stephen O'Brien today wrapped up his visit to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. With 3.8 million people internally displaced, the DRC is today the African country most affected by internal displacement. While the UN and NGOs have traditionally operated in the eastern part of the country, the past 12 months have seen a surge in needs in the central region of Kasai. Mr. O'Brien's visit, um, Mr. O'Brien has visited some of the communities most affected by the, the massive humanitarian crisis, including in central Kasai province, where a year of conflict has led to serious human rights abuses and displaced 1.4 million people. The complex, multi-layered crisis is affecting half of the country's 26 provinces, while the appeal for, for $748 million that was launched earlier this year has so far received less than 25% of funding. A press release covering the visit will be released later today. Earlier this week, we spoke from here about the aerial attack on the battled Mauza district of Yemen's Thais governorate. The UN Human Rights Office said today that it is believed that Tuesday's airstrike by the Arab coalition forces destroyed a makeshift house killing all three families believed to have been incited at the time. The attack is believed to have killed at least 18 civilians, including 10 children and two women. The Human Rights Office stresses that attacks targeting civilians or civilian objects or indiscriminate or disproportionate attacks are prohibited under international humanitarian law. It also reminds all parties to the conflict, including the coalition, of their duty to ensure full respect for international humanitarian law and to respect their obligations under international human rights law. The office calls on the relevant authorities to carry out a comprehensive and impartial investigation into this incident. The World Health Organization said today that between, 20, the, between the 27th of April and the 19th of July, there have been 368,207 suspected cholera cases and 1,828 deaths in Yemen, which is facing the world's largest outbreak of the disease. Every day, 5,000 Yemenis are falling ill with symptoms of acute watery diarrhea or cholera. WHO and its partners are working to help treat those affected and to reduce the further spread of cholera, including through scaling up access to clean water and sanitation, setting up treatment centers, training health workers, reinforcing surveillance, and working with communities on prevention. WHO stresses that the cholera outbreak is far from being under control with the rainy season having begun and possibly increasing the pace of transmission. WHO and its partners have provided more than 800,000 bags of IV fluids, among other supplies and medicines. You can read more about this in the Geneva briefing notes. The ninth general meeting of the Caribbean community and associated institutions and the United Nations system will close this afternoon. The Secretary General and CARICOM Secretary General Erwin Larocque addressed the meeting during yesterday's opening session. The Secretary General expressed appreciation for CARICOM's contributions to the United Nations for key issues such as climate change. This year's meeting is notable as, among other things, it marks the 25th anniversary of the decision of the General Assembly to grant the Caribbean community observer status at the United Nations. In Pakistan, the UN Refugee Agency today welcomed the launch of a program to register undocumented Afghans living in the country, which are estimated to be around 600,000 to 1 million people. The program is the result of three years of consultations between the governments of Afghanistan and Pakistan and UNHCR. It will provide undocumented Afghans with citizen cards, protecting them from arbitrary arrests, and extend the validity of registration cards to some 1.4 million registered Afghan refugees. Um, the program will be carried out in all parts, in all of Pakistan's provinces by, 16, by the 16th of August, with the support of the Internal or International Organization for Migration and UNHCR. Regarding AIDS, the World Health Organization alerts countries to the increasing trend of resistance to HIV drugs detailed in a report based on national surveys conducted in several countries. This growing threat could undermine global progress in treating and preventing HIV infection if early and effective action is not taken. 
The WHO HIV drug resistance report for 2017 shows that in six of the 11 countries surveyed in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, over 10% of people starting antiretroviral therapy had a strain of HIV that was resistant to some of the most widely used HIV medicines. Once the threshold of 10% has been reached, WHO recommends those countries urgently review their HIV treatment programs. The report is available online. That's all I've got. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, Masood. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, around this uh, situation in Yemen, uh, which is basically all man-made crisis, and it is at this point in time absolutely turning into a devastating tragedy of unimaginable uh, proportions. Does the United Nations Secretary General or any United Nations body has, I mean, besides the fact that uh, helping the Yemenis to meet, uh, to mitigate the, this crisis, has the Secretary General thought about instituting crimes of, uh, against humanity, against the, against the coalition which led this, uh, in, uh, this country into this crisis? Well, regarding that, what the Secretary General and the High Commissioner for Human Rights have been stressing is the need for uh, accountability for all human rights violations. And uh, we believe that that needs to be carried out uh, initially by all the parties to make sure that uh, international human humanitarian and human rights law is respected. But if there needs to be any further follow-up, we'll consider that. Uh, yes, Jahan first. All right, so um, talking about asking about Jerusalem, uh, we've, we're hearing now that three, at least three people have been killed uh, in clashes um, surrounding the latest developments around Al-Aqsa Mosque. Do you have anything um, to add since yesterday? Uh, so we're, we're certainly concerned about uh, the reported violence and, and we're trying to get uh, the latest figures from our colleagues on the ground. Uh, you'll have seen what Nikolai Mladenov had said uh, and uh, the need by all sides to avoid uh, escalating tensions and uh, to avoid uh, any steps that lead to, to uh, further violence. Uh, Mr. Mladenov uh, has appreciated uh, the stated commitment by the Israeli Prime Minister to uh, uh, preserve the, the status quo at the holy sites. And, uh, and we hope that that will be honored. So well, I just have that. a small, just a small follow-up because I, I haven't heard, I mean, the issue now is regarding the metal detectors and I obviously understand the metal detectors were put in response to, to, to previous violence, but what, what is your position regarding these uh, um, measures that could, could be interpreted as, as changing the status quo? So do you consider these metal detectors as a change in the status quo? Ultimately, what's important is for all of the people at the holy sites, including all the worshippers at the holy site, to feel that their religious liberties are being respected. Uh, obviously, this is a complex issue. We do understand legitimate security concerns. But on the other hand, it is important that the status quo at the sites be retained. So this is part of a, a discussion. And we certainly hope that the various parties on the ground will treat each other's concerns with sensitivity as they resolve this issue. Follow yes. up on that. Whenever uh, an occupation soldier is killed in the West Bank or in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Secretary General is quick to condemn the killing and considers or labors it as a terrorist attack. Whereas a child today, seven year old, was killed by a, by a settler sniper in the, in, in the vicinity of the mosque. And of course, we'd not hear any condemnation or even Unless we asked, this wouldn't have been mentioned in this briefing. Why is this double standard in dealing with the, the Palestinian blood and the Israeli blood? Uh, either side accuses us of this, depending upon our concerns for, for one side or the other. We are concerned about all of the violence against all of the people. Uh, and we deplore any violence that harms anyone, uh, so, including uh, this child. Uh, what we need to do, though, is to study the situation and see what uh, is the most helpful uh, step forward. Uh, and for some of the issues like this, issues of great sensitivity, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to tell right away what is the best response uh, to an immediate action. Obviously, we want all sides to avoid any steps that could lead to further violence, 
that could lead to further tensions. How they will deal with each other is, is a complex issue, but uh, Mr. Mladenov and his colleagues on the, on the ground are studying it. You'll have seen that he did issue a statement on this yesterday, and, and if there's any follow-up statements that need to be issued, we'll take that into due consideration. Follow-up? Uh, 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 hold hold on. On, uh, on the same so hold on. Uh, he has a question finished. on the same. Can you finish, Mustafa? Now, uh, so you, are you condemning the uh, Palestinians killing today? Uh, obviously, we're we're very concerned about the the death of anyone. We we need to uh, find out more details about what's happened, but uh, the deaths of anyone, uh, including uh, the very young and people who are simply gathered to worship, is deplorable. Yes. I just follow. Well, the Al Aqsa Mosque has been subject to many attacks by, since occupation. Once it was burnt all together, incinerated by settlers. And when every now and then they are, the settlers attack the worshippers, the, the security, the Israeli security also attack the worshippers. This is systematic. Shouldn't the Secretary General call for something that a protection to this area if he wants the status quo to remain as it is? Uh, as you know, the, at the holy sites uh, in the old city of Jerusalem, there's a role for Israel. There's a role played by Jordan. Uh, we, uh, of course, respect uh, the work that the parties have done to try to make sure that the holy sites are preserved and that people have access to them. And we hope that uh, the, the status quo as the, the parties, such as the Israelis and the Jordanians, have handled the situation can be maintained. Uh, Just last, one last question uh, on, on the subject. Hold on, on the there's same a subject. number of on questions the on the same topic. topic. Okay, you and then Edi. Okay, does the Secretary General consider what's happening today and in the last few days as a threat to international peace and security since this is a very sensitive area which can incinerate the whole region? We, we want the parties to be able to deal with this and to de-escalate the situation so that there is no threat to anyone there. Yes. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Um, can you tell us why the Secretary General canceled his meeting with Venezuela's foreign minister today? Uh, unfortunately, the Secretary General had to cancel all of his appointments for today because of a family matter that rose up. Uh, so he is not in the office today. He will return and be back in the office as of Monday. Um, is the Venezuelan uh, foreign minister going to see anyone else? Yes, he, he will see the chef de cabinet in, in the secretary general's absence. Yes. And do you know what time that's going to be? I, I believe it's at the same time as it was scheduled for the secretary general. So it should be happening, I believe, right now. Yes. The PA appeal for $308 million for reproductive health services and programs on gender-based violence in Syria, Iraq, South Sudan, Nigeria, Yemen, and only has received 23% of what is needed. Um, do you have any comments on about the shortfall or on funding, and do you think it's is it related to um, the U.S. funding cuts? Uh, Obviously, uh, there's any number of countries who sometimes uh, have problems uh, trying to contribute to our appeals. Uh, we've spoken out about the problems when uh, there's a perception of donor fatigue. Uh, but as you know, there's a huge number of UN appeals. Uh, some of them get funded reasonably well, others do not. Uh, but these are the numbers in all these cases, these are the numbers that are our central needs. And we try to push to make sure that, uh, that they will be fully funded. Uh, yes, Oleg. Thanks, Farhan. Going back to what's happening in Jerusalem, uh, a while ago there was a request for an international protection force from the Palestinians. There was some sort of discussion on that. Do you think what's happening now is a sign that there should be some re pr protection force over there? And also, does the Secretary General think there is a need for more diplomatic intervention, since the issue does not resolve, resolve by itself. It's getting worse by, by every day. Well, regarding the question of an international protection force, uh, that's really a question for the members of the Security Council. Any such force would need to have a Security Council mandate, and it's for them to consider. Um, regarding the issue of, of diplomacy, the Secretary General and, and the UN have been uh, as you know, at the forefront of efforts to try to have uh, diplomatic solutions to the problems uh, that uh, the region faces. Uh, as you know, there's a, a, a group, the Quartet, which ties together the U.S., the Russian Federation, the European Union, and the United Nations. And, and the Quartet has continued uh, with its own efforts 
to try to see what can be done to help the situation. At, at the end of the day, as the Secretary General and others have stressed, what's important is for the parties themselves to be willing to talk to each other. Yes. Sure. A number of things, but just on, on the Secretary General, does this mean that the, the, the reform retreat, the location of which you wouldn't disclose, is itself also canceled or postponed? And will you yes. say when it's, when it's it, it, to be it redone? Is, it, it is postponed until Thursday. Okay. Until next Thursday. Okay, thanks a lot. I wanted to ask first on your, what you'd said, this statement on Sri Lanka. I'd asked you a couple of days ago about Ben Emerson's findings of continued mass torture in the country, and I didn't really hear much of a response. What's, what's the relationship between this statement praising, praising the government for a forward going action and what was just found as to actual torture, and what's the relationship of this statement to Mr. Feltman's visit to the country? Part of uh, the point is that Mr. Feltman does intend to follow up and make sure that we can get the government of Sri Lanka to move forwards on issues, including issues of human rights concerns. This was a major human rights concern, the issue of missing persons. And we've been pressing on this for about a year and a half. So the establishment of this office is a, a welcome step forward. It's not the only step forward. As Mr. Emerson points out, there, there are concerns on the ground that not enough progress has been made on human rights. And so these are some of the issues that uh, Mr. Feltman will be talking about with the leaders while he's there. What's this, I guess, maybe relatedly, I just to, to move it along, there, as I'm sure you've seen the published report that when Mr. Jen, Jencha, Miroslav Jencha went to Myanmar, he was unable, he was, quote, snubbed, unable to meet with any high officials. Do you deny that? Who did he meet with there? Well, Mr. Jencha, actually the, the report was inaccurate in a number of ways. Mr. Jencha uh, told us, in fact, that uh, he was there, as you know, for the Panglong Conference, and uh, as part of that, in the uh, in the evening at the dinner to the Panglong Con Conference, he he did in fact meet with Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, somewhat briefly, but he also had longer meetings with uh, several other minister level officials. So, so the idea that that they didn't meet with them is simply not true. Okay, and I wanted yesterday I'd asked you about the the, the then t taking place protest in Al Hosema in the Rif region of Morocco, and you said that you'd look into it and see if there's any statement. Since then, it's been reported all over the world that the government used tear gas. There's a man in a coma. I'm wondering, since I did, did you check, and and what's the UN yeah. statement on this? Yes, yes, we we've uh, asked our colleagues in the Department for Political Affairs uh, if if there's any response, I'll share it with you. Okay, I have an, I mean, it's a go ahead. It is, uh, it's please. Uh, Nassar and then Masood. Okay. No, no, Nassar first. Uh, Gong Gong to Yemen attack on Taz. Uh, mm -hmm. in the wedding uh, in Sana'a was attacked more than a year ago, and hundreds of people perished in that attack, uh, hundreds and many uh, hundreds injured. What, what kind of investigation has been done so far in order to, uh, for, for these people who really suffered a lot and many dead as a result? We, we've asked the, the authorities themselves to, to investigate uh, any uh, of the atrocities that have been occurring, including that one. Well, I, haven't, I haven't heard of any real team going and investigating that. Authorities, which authorities? You mean the, Abdul the, 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 the authorities on the ground. That It's their ultimate responsibility to investigate any uh, atrocities or violations of international humanitarian and you human mean, rights you law. You mean they did not come up with any results of what happened to them? You, you, would, you would have to ask them, yes. Th thank you, Stefan. On this uh, middle, uh, middle, on this uh, Middle East and Israeli situation, uh, the Middle East Quartet, as uh, somebody was pointing out, Middle East Quartet has done nothing except to uh, what you call second guess other other situation as it is. And uh, is it ever going to take an initiative wherein to bring the parties to talk? Because it has not succeeded in doing anything so far. And it, its existence as it is, is very tenuous. Do you think it should exist as such? The quartet does exist and has been in existence for some time. And it's yeah. useful in bringing together uh, different parties which in earlier years had sometimes been at a crossroads with each other in terms of how to deal with the situation. This is a platform which helps them to unite and forge common positions. And uh, Contrary to what you said, they've had uh, many different statements that express their own common positions on the way forward. Uh, success and failure in this case, uh, it's, it's, it's a long time coming. Uh, as you know, in recent years, the biggest problem has been bringing the parties together, but the quartet is, is part of that effort. Yes. Sure. I wanted to ask you, first, uh, on, in Burundi, the Reporters Sans Frontières has put out a statement about uh, today about the, the reporter Jean Bejirimana 
went missing a year ago. It's a very high profile case in the country. And I'm just wondering, given that now there's a new envoy, is the UN, has the UN followed up in any way on this disappearance of Iwaku's main correspondent, uh, allegedly in gov government hands? Regarding that, uh, our, our human rights mechanisms have expressed their own concerns uh, about the treatment of this and, and other cases of harassment of, of journalists and of the media, and our concerns remain. And I wanted to ask, to, to, today in the Ang Lapsang case downtown, the bookkeeper of South South News presented on the screen a number of, uh, of uh, Excel spreadsheets of payments. And I want to I do this delicately. Would the UN be concerned if the now part of the evidence in the case, payment records of South South News showed current, recent, and in some cases revolving UN staff and consultants on the payroll. Would that be of concern? And if so, who in the UN is actually tracking this case? Because that's not the purpose of the case. The government is not going to make a finding one way or another, but these evidences are going in. And so who is actually tracking the case? There are UN people as uh, on different days who are testifying in the case, and there are others who are monitoring this. I don't have anything further to say about the case at this, at this stage as it's ongoing. There was one guy that testified, and he was there for, for you know, two hours, and he, he claimed immunity as to himself. I, just, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking you, would it be of concern? So just rather than who's monitoring the case, would this be of concern to the UN? Is the UN, has it closed the books on its own responsibilities and links to the case after those audits, or are they in fact monitoring what's coming out in the case? We, we are in fact monitoring what's coming out in the case. Yes. Yeah, on, uh, on Yemen, uh, while Mr. Ismail Will Sheikh Ahmad presented his uh, recent report on the situation there, he condemned the attack on the United Arab Emirates vessel in near Bab al Mandeb or opposite to Al Makha. And he did not mention whether that vessel was civilian or military. Have you established whether it is civilian or military? Uh, I, I would just refer you back to the statement uh, issued by Ismail ul that that, said, that states but, what his position it, is on it, this. It, it remains uh, if, if there's any further details, he will share those with the Security Council. Well, well uh, by now, I mean, they sh we should have. I asked that question the yeah. same day, and it's yeah, more uh, than two weeks uh, now. They should have established by now whether it is civilian I mean, or... Uh, if, if, there, if there's any further information for him to share, he will share it with the okay. council. Okay, uh, on Hadaida, is uh, there uh, any uh, progress? Hold on, uh, hold on. Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Fun, on this... Uh, it, you know, it's Yemen. still Farhan. Sorry, sorry. Thanks. Farhan, for, for, I'm so sorry. No problem. Uh, uh, on, say, say, continuing on Yemen, uh, has the Secretary General or any other... Um, High official of the United Nations had had any talks with the Saudis coalition to f fund the immense cost of uh, cholera epidemic, which is now, I mean, devastating the the country, absolutely destroying the country. We're reaching out to uh, all nations, but also including the nations in the region, to make sure that our cholera efforts are funded. But these, are, but this is the country. These are the coalition forces which launched the attack unprovoked, they should be held responsible for what the situation that they have created. So has the Secretary General, I mean, in, this, in the past, the Secretary General uh, let uh, Ban Ki-moon let uh, the Saudi Arabia off the hook by not including it on the list of the nations uh, performing the, the, this uh, human rights violation in this uh, region. So what is it going to do now to what he called bring Saudi Arabia and these countries to account for. When it comes to our appeals, we want all nations uh, to contribute. Certainly countries in the region and, and their own uh, efforts to contribute to the cholera appeal would be appreciated. Yes. Yeah, Save the Children uh, Organization has called for Mr. Guterres to, uh, to put Saudi Arabia on list of shame again, which was unlisted from last year. Uh, is he going to respond positively to that? Well, regarding the list and the report, those are still being worked on by the special representative for children armed conflict. We expect the report to come out sometime around September. Have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs>